<laughs> All right, welcome back you guys. Um, today I wanna bring you a video about the way that I customize the EM1 Mark II, which is my main body for shooting weddings and events and portraits. If you are a different type of photographer, you're probably gonna make some changes to this based on your shooting style. But if you're like me, you like shooting people, you like shooting portraits and you shoot some events, this could be a great way to set up your camera. I've been shooting with the camera now for about a year and I think that it took a good long while to kind of go through every setting that it has and understand what it does and how I could customize it for the way that I shoot. So these are my favorite settings. You may have some of your own. I'd love to hear about it. Hit me up in the comments if you have a suggestion or you want me to look at something else. But let's go through it. So the first thing about the camera is that um, I am a back button focus person. I think this is a little bit of a polarizing topic for photographers, but for me, I really love separating the focusing of the camera and the firing of the camera into two different buttons. The main reason for that is that if I'm sitting on a photo waiting for something to happen and I've recomposed even slightly and my focus point moves off of my subject, I really want the camera not to refocus when I push the firing button. So I've uh, separated the two of them. I've been doing that forever. If you've never done it before, it's gonna drive you nuts for the first couple of weeks probably that you do it. But I will tell you that of all the converts I've made over the years, that almost 100% of them have kept with it and feel like it's the only way to go at this point. So um, in this case, I have put the back button focus point on the AEL, AFL button on the back of the camera. It's a simple change to make. Um, you just go into the menu settings and we're going to go to the gear and then right here under A1 you find AEL, AFL. And in this case you have to define each of the modes the way that button's going to work. So for both SAF which is single autofocus and continuous autofocus, CAF, I set it up the same way. It's in mode 3. So if I fully press the button on the firing button, it's, that's the exposure, and you can see the AEL, AFL button back here is set to SAF. So that works awesome for me. So that's tip number one. Uh, number two is dealing with ISO and white balance. So right out of the box, Olympus has set the camera up a little bit differently than I do. Um, there's a switch here on the back of the camera. It's the one, two switch that, uh, will allow you to switch between doing aperture and shutter speed on the two main dials to doing ISO and white balance. And that's a pretty great idea. I love that concept, but I wanted to use that switch for something else. So instead of using that, I've actually mapped one of these buttons here on the front of the camera to do the same thing. In this case, it's this top button. So in order to do that, all you need to do is go into the menus and we're going to go to the button editor. So we're going to go down to B for button function. So it's this top one and you'll scroll to the right. And then down here at the bottom of the first page are these two uh, entries labeled function function. And the uh, top one there you'll see, oops, let me grab that back. button function and then down to top one. You see I've mapped that top one to white balance and ISO. So the way this works for me is that um, you're shooting and you're doing aperture and shutter speed. If you need to make a change to your white balance or your ISO, I just tap that button on the front of the camera and then immediately those two dials that I have uh, will change the white balance on the top and the um, uh, <laughs> the ISO on the back and that works really great for me it's super quick and really makes the camera a joy to use you can do that all up to your eye obviously because you're looking through the camera and you can see what's changing um, so that works awesome so that's mapped to that function button on the front of the camera that's tip number two all right so moving right along let's talk about continuous autofocus so this camera has fantastic continuous autofocus i only use it um, during certain times of the day but for me one of the critical things that i've discovered is a way to go from single autofocus to continuous really quickly so um, you know old school cameras used to be like a little switch on the front of the camera of course we're not doing that um, but i did want to find a way to do it that was quick and simple so in my case, what I've done is mapped that function to change fo uh, focus modes to this toggle switch on the back, this one, two switch. The reason I did that is that I change that far less often than I do white balance and ISO, and I find that this toggle switch to be a little less 
easy, a little uh, more cumbersome of a switch to move if you're using it over and over and over and over again. So this makes it a little bit faster, a little bit easier for me. So to do that, you're in that same area inside the camera. So you're back to menu, you're down to, um, let me just make sure I'm in the right spot. Yes, we're in B and we're looking for function lever settings. And so this is the function lever. And so I'll go in here and I'll set this up for mode two, which changes the autofocus mode. So um, just a couple of notes on this. Um, mode one and mode two are set by whatever you last had them at. So if you are in mode two, um, like if I'm here, I'll just go put my camera into mode two. And if I go to my super control panel, you'll see that I'm in CAF. But I could map that to M, manual focus or single focus or whatever. It's just that whenever I return to mode two, it will be wherever I left it at. So in my case, I leave mode two on continuous autofocus all the time. And then when I go mode one, which is always SAF, then I can switch between the two really quickly. So just to show you that, if we're in mode two right now, you see right there, I'm highlighting CAF. If I flip to mode one, then I'm in SAF. So that works awesome for me. And the main time that I use something like that is when, like for example, there's the kiss and the walk out of the church. I want SAF for the ceremony because I'm sitting and waiting on photos and I don't want the camera trying to find something. Um, and then as soon as they turn to walk out of the chapel, I will go to continuous autofocus and track them moving all the way back up the aisle. And that works awesome. So um, that is how continuous autofocus goes for me. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is actually has to do with the lenses. Um, I use a lot of Olympus's pro line of lenses and they have this manual focus clutch mechanism on them. And so moving this little, uh, the focus uh, ring back and forth moves between autofocus and continuous autofocus, I mean a manual focus. And um, for shooting weddings and events, I really don't <laughs> like that, believe it or not. Um, I'm a two camera shooter, so I typically have a second camera on my hip. And what I found is that, you know, as I'm working throughout the day, that occasionally that'll get bumped and it'll get moved into manual focus. And then when I go to grab that camera quickly, it's obviously not autofocusing. So I've disabled that on all of my cameras. Uh, simple thing to do if that's bugging you too, it's in A3. So if we go back to menu, we're still in the uh, the gear icon and we'll go up to A3, you'll see manual focus clutch right there and I have it marked as inoperative. So that's what works best for me. I know there's a lot of schools of thought on this and if you're doing a lot of video or you like to manual focus or you're a single camera shooter, then maybe that autofocus clutch is awesome for you. Um, but for me, I, I like to keep things as simple as possible and as um, sort of idiot proof as possible. <laughs> so having that turned off just makes sure that I don't make any mistakes when I'm moving quickly. Okay, so that's continuous autofocus. Um, one other quick note about continuous autofocus for me, I of course tend to work in a lot of dim situations and I also really require really accurate autofocus a lot of the time when I'm shooting portraits. I only use the smallest focus point in the camera for all of my work, whether I'm tracking people or shooting dancing at night or uh, shooting ceremonies and whatever. So um, I have disabled all other modes in of terms of autofocus other than the single point autofocus and I find that works best for me. Um, I've worked with all the different modes when people are like moving uh, towards me in a dim situation like moving up an aisle and I really found that single autofocus point is is the best one for me. So word to the wise on that one. Okay so the next thing we're talking about is super critical. And that is that when you're working with a mirrorless camera, and if you haven't ever done this before, this is, this is pay attention, <laughs> this is really critical. Um, it, normally when you're looking through the camera and you're shooting available light, um, the camera is showing you the exposure, which is one of the best reasons to move to a mirrorless camera system because if you're working with tricky lighting or trying to work a scene in a certain way, you can just in real time view exactly what the camera is seeing and you will actually, in essence, preview what you're going to get out of the camera before you even take the picture, right? But when you go to take a flash exposure, uh, especially when you are underexposing the background, like let's say, for example, uh, dancing photos at night, you know, at a reception, you do not want to see the ambient exposure because you'll be seeing picture that's two, three <laughs> stops under, right? It'd be really dark. What you want is you want the camera to show you the best possible exposure so that um, you can see faces, expressions, dance moves, all that kind of good stuff. And then, um, of course, with the flash on, the picture will be you know, properly exposed. Well, you need to turn that mode on with Olympus cameras. 
So I have mapped it to a button on top of my camera, which is right here. It's FN2. It's this little, you know, uh, squiggly line button FN2 right next to record. And so what I need to do uh, when I go, let's say, for example, shooting the ceremony, we're walking around the chapel, we're going back up for family pictures, and I've got my strobes, and I'm about to light family pictures, is I will touch that button once. It'll move the viewfinder's image into that SOVF mode, show me the best possible exposure so that I'm not looking at a dim picture as I'm working with the family formals. So to, um, to move to SOVF, mode you're still in the button editor which is in B and uh, you're just going to go to button function and then uh, here you'll see FN2 is mapped to SOVF. So it's a simple function um, you know I kind of wish that it would just automatically turn on when the flash was put on the camera but I understand maybe there's some reasons why that wouldn't be the case um, but for me um, this, is, this works just as well. So all night long when I'm working on reception, I have, usually have it in the SOVF mode. And then it's more like our traditional you know, DSLR kind of situation. You're not actually seeing the exposure. But for flash, that's kind of the way that you want it. So that's SOVF. Okay, so card slots. So, okay, this is a little bit tricky. <laughs> you know, and I love Olympus cameras. Let me just say this, that... This is the most complicated camera that I think you can buy, <laughs> or it's got to be close to it. But at the same time, it's really amazing that you can go through and customize this thing to exactly the way that you want it. And I find that that is critical to speed and creativity. So even, while, even though this is a lot of really geeky stuff, um, doing this once or getting some advice on how to do this I think is really nice because um, once you have these things set and you're really working with the camera, no matter how geeky all this widgetry is inside this camera, what we're really getting to is the point that you can operate it quickly and efficiently up to your eye and just do it very intuitively and just, you know, be able to concentrate on the pictures that you're making. So, okay, um, card slots. So there's a ton of ways to set up the dual card slots inside the camera. Um, it has two slots, obviously, both SD cards. Um, it's important to note the top card in the camera is the faster of the two slots. It's the one that uses the UHS-2 type SD cards. And so that is the slot that I write my RAWs to. And um, the bottom slot is a little bit slower of the SDs, uh, SD type card slot, and I write JPEGs to that slot. Now, I know a lot of people set these up different ways. A lot of people write dual RAWs um, to either card. Some have it set up to be an overflow situation or so on and so forth. Or maybe they split it and put video on one and stills on the other. But as a guy shooting weddings, I really like redundancy and I like backups. So <laughs> at the end of the night, the reason I like having that uh, the card slot on the bottom be JPEG is because I want an entire wedding. I want the, all the photos that took on one camera to be on one card that never left the camera. And so um, for me, um, having that peace of mind is really great. I can give those photos to my wife when she heads home. Now we've separated the wedding photographs and um, I feel like, you know, we stand an even better chance in a catastrophe of having a full set of the photos. I will also say that um, since moving to the mirrorless camera system and having the ability to preview exposures and whatnot, um, the JPEGs have just gotten better and better and better. And so if I had to go through and edit a wedding from the JPEGs, I really have no hesitation delivering those to a client. So uh, one quick word to the wise on that. If you go into your super control panel and it's the bottom leftmost icon, these two little cards over here, you can uh, hit OK and then scroll over and see a contextual menu of what they're doing. And um, it's really important that I have this set to, it's that little down arrow with the two cards. It says saves to both cards applying their respective settings, so JPEG and RAW. If one card becomes full, the other card cannot be saved. What that means is that once my raw card fills up, the camera will alert me that that card is full. I need to change it. If you have it set up the other way and your raw card becomes full, it'll keep shooting to your JPEG card and you may not notice. So that's pretty critical. So I'm going to leave that set and we're back out. Um, I don't ever set that again. <laughs> this is kind of is how it is. Um, if you do not have a JPEG card in the camera and you're just shooting to one card, it'll just shoot RAWs to one card. So you can leave a set this way all the time. Okay, that's card slots. So that's number five. Number six is um, image review. 
Um, this is simple. I turn the image review off on the camera. What I uh, don't want to have happen is I don't like every time it takes a picture, it's trying to pull up the photo to show me all the time. Um, I am also times concentrating pretty hard on the moment and watching what I'm doing. And if I let off of the shutter for a second, I don't want the camera popping into a review mode. Um, just slows me down or distracts me. So I have it turned off and I'll just go back and hit the play button when I'm ready to look at pictures. So image review is I think in the last menu. Yeah, it's record view. So REC view in the wrench. So you can just turn that to off if you like to work that way. Okay, so that was six. Number seven is <clears throat> uh, picture mode. Um, okay, so of course we're shooting RAWs and we're working exclusively with RAWs. But uh, setting up your JPEG the right way and working with your white balance throughout the wedding day not only gives you a great set of JPEGs as your backup, but it also gives you a better representation of what you have in the RAW file. So you could set up your JPEGs to be monochromes and it wouldn't affect your RAW files. Or you could set it up for high contrast, high saturation, or whatever you want. I don't do that. What I tend to do is set it to a more muted tone so that I'm seeing sort of the flattest possible picture I can to see what I've captured in the RAW file. So in this case, if you go to the Super Control Panel again, and there's different ways to do this, but this is one of the easiest. Top right here, you'll see I have it set to Muted Profile. And even within Muted, I've dialed down the contrast and saturation to minus one on both. And what I found is that that setting for me gives me sort of the most neutral, most uh, unbiased, and closest to raw sort of uh, representation of the picture. So um, just a word to the wise on that, try and get your JPEGs right. Um, if you change, the, if the white balance is too far off on a photo, it can actually affect the histogram and um, how you sort of see the exposure. And when you go into the raw converter and then change the white balance to something that's correct, even if it was way off and you're moving back, of course, the color is going to come back correctly, but you're also going to find out that you may be underexposed or overexposed that picture. Okay, so that is picture mode. That is seven or eight. <laughs> yeah, I have to remind me later. And then, um, okay, so I have three more things to talk about. Um, and a couple of these next two are pretty weird and pretty Olympus exclusive. Um, the first one is called flicker mode. So if you've been shooting for a long time, then you're well aware of the fact that when you walk into a room with fluorescent tube lighting, that you need to pay special attention to your shutter speed. What happens with fluorescent lights is that they're pulsing all the time at a certain refresh rate, like 50 hertz or 60 hertz, that kind of thing. And the net result is that while your eye can't see it, if the shutter speed in the camera is too high, you're only gonna catch part of that pulse of light. And what you're gonna see in your picture is bands of light and dark or like miscoloration of green and then neutral colored. And so what you need to do in those situations is move your shutter speed low enough that you do catch every time a full pulse of the light and then your pictures will come back to normal. Um, what the camera is capable of doing is sensing that pulsing of light and then changing the exposure in the camera so that you don't see that in the EVF. And this, this is the best of my understanding. Um, the net though is that when you're working with it, that sometimes if you're shooting wide open like 1.2 or 1.8, the lens will actually sh close down slightly to make a different exposure for you for the EVF. And then if you go to take the photo, it opens back up again, takes the photo and then closes back down again, uh, part of the way. And so what you feel is this weird jittery effect in your lens and it may be driving you nuts. Um, so I've gone in and just turned that whole system off. I'm, I'm pretty well aware after the number of years I've been working that I need to be aware in those situations and um, I'll just generally pick a shutter speed like you know, 60 to 125th to kind of alleviate that problem. So if you want to get rid of the flicker reduction, you need to go to D1. So here we are again, and we're in the gear, and we're going to go down to D, oh, sorry, D2. You'll find flicker reduction is the last menu item, and you can just turn that off. And that will save you from that pulsing of the lens problem, and at, at the same time, um, it won't save you if you don't understand what's going on. So be very aware of fluorescent lighting. Okay, and then, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about um, for customizations is um, there's another um, sort of strange setting on the camera where it will bias the auto white balance towards warmer tones. Um, I don't know why that's there, but I tend to like the more neutral tones, so I've turned that off. 
if you go to G, you'll see a setting that says auto white balance, keep warm color. And I have mine turned off. So in that case, you know, like I said, you can play around with it and see which one works better for you. Um, I just tend to keep things as accurate as possible and then I'll deal with the white balance when, I, when I'm editing. So, okay, the last thing I wanna talk about is just a bonus tip here on how to work with autofocus in the camera. So they've given us a whole different, or huge set of ways to work with the autofocus in this camera. But one of the things that's pretty key to being able to move the focus point around uh, in the frame is learning to work with the LCD screen in order to use your thumb when it's up to your eye to move it around. And I just wanna cover a couple of tips that I've found really useful for me. Um, so if we turn the camera on and you have touch enabled, which is this little icon here with the green box in the hand. If you just touch onto the screen, you can move the focus point around. Okay, but one thing I wasn't aware of is this little thing over here on the side with the magnifying glass. That will actually change the size of the focus point. And that wasn't immediately aware to me, um, apparent to me when I first started working with the system. So I like a really small focus point in order to be precise with what I'm focusing on. But this system works pretty well, but I don't think it works as well as using the actual um, built-in focus points in the camera. And I think that's because this camera is both contrast AF and um, phase detect. And if you wanna use the phase detect auto points, which I think work a little bit better in lower light, you'll want to go into that part of your autofocus system. So if you go to the super control panel, and you bring up the um, focus points, which is this box right here, and touch that one more time, it brings up a grid. And those, I believe, um, are the actual like registered phase detect autofocus points in the camera. And you can move them around with your finger as well. So if it's up to your eye, you can move it here or there, wherever you need it to be. Uh, those boxes tend to be a little bit more uh, accurate and a little grabbier in lower light in terms of getting the focus. So I tend to move them around that way. Um, so if I'm in reasonably good light, I might just work with the touch points. But if I'm in lower light, like I'm about to shoot the first dance or something, I'm going to use those uh, registered autofocus points. And then one thing to note is that I do have this button, which I believe is the default. Um, if you have moved your focus point around considerably, you hit that button and it will take you back to the center of the frame. Um, so it's just a quick and handy thing. So. You know, like I said, there's, those are the two basic ways to sort of work with the autofocus system to move the focus points around, either by touching the screen directly with touch autofocus, um, in which case you can change the size of the focus point with the scale over here on the right, or I will set it up so that when I go to my super control panel, I've always got it on the autofocus point. So a quick double tap on OK brings me into this screen where I can move the focus points around. Um, and those are the registered sort of autofocus points. Um, I believe that's how it works. <laughs> anyway, that's um, what works best for me in terms of working in uh, the lowest light conditions. I'll want to use those, those more registered autofocus points from that array. So that's my bonus tip for today. Let me know if you guys have any thoughts, suggestions, things you want to talk about, ways to set up your camera that really work well for you. Hit me up in the comments. And um, if you want to find me online, you can find me at uh, josephmark.com is my wedding website, J-O-S-E-P-H-M-A-R-K. Or you can find me on Instagram at josephmarkphoto. So josephmark again, then P-H-O-T-O. -O. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.